Okay, so hi and welcome everyone to the talk about um, on cloud infinite scale. My name is Tobias Bader. I'm a product manager of Infinite Scale at OwnCloud. And today I want to share with you what the advantages of Infinite Scale are and how to get started. Um, for those who don't know, Infinite Scale is a file sharing application which is designed for self hosting. Um, it is the successor of the old PHP based uh, OwnCloud which um, also shares some history with Nextcloud, of course, and that is a complete re, um, rewrite in Go uh, with a new microservice architecture, and is also Apache 2 licensed, so feel free to use. Um, yeah, self-hosting for myself is, um, in the first place, fun. Uh, I have some uh, I have a home lab installation at home, and yeah, I do it for fun, uh, basically, but it also, of course, brings privacy, Independence, especially in um, times of political tension, um, you don't want to be locked out maybe because there is some SaaS service and you don't get an access anymore because of political reasons maybe and of course compliance foremost GDPR and um, all the other things that you want to comply maybe in a professional context. So, but... Um, Self-hosting comes also at a price, so for users if I... Um, at home, set up uh, my infinite scale and then share it with my family. They don't say, thank you, this is a new interface I have to learn, but they say, oh, I hate change, why doesn't it look like uh, OneDrive or a Google Drive? Um, so this is the cost that comes for end users, some, some little switching cost there. And for admins, of course, um, you win some new duties, like you have to maintain the whole LAMP stack. And of course, you're also... 100% uh, accountable if something doesn't happen, if something doesn't work. Um, yeah, then everyone points at you. You can't point at a SaaS provider and say uh, it's burned down or something like that. So it's all on your shoulders. So the idea or the ideal we, we are striving for is to bring the convenience of SaaS to your self hosted system. Um, and how could we do this? Um, the main focus here is simplicity. And I found a very good uh, site here. Maybe some of you know it. Um, make each program do one thing well. Do a new job, build afresh, rather than complicate all programs by adding new features. So, yeah, you are smiling. <laughs> okay, recognized it from these silver bags here. Unix philosophy, 1978. Yeah, so this means what we really focus on is file sharing. It means we don't try to implement a chat application or a video application or some kind of ILIG Nivol make so, but really do file sharing good. So for the user, um, we did also a complete rewrite of the web interface and focused on accessibility. And accessibility is not only for, user, for users or people in uh, wheelchairs or blind people, but also if you have maybe a little baby on one on, on the one arm and you can't use the mouse because um, you don't you only have the hand for the keyboard, um, then already accessibility um, kicks in. Um, so we are all affected at some time. And yeah, the new web UI is also completely um, API driven, and this means that this is completely decoupled. From the server, in theory, you could also rewrite your own client, of course. Um, and I know of one case where this already happened, um, because the web client is yeah, just another client, like um, the desktop or mobile client. And we also are orientate on familiar UX concepts. So what you see if users open the web UI, first what they try is they try some drag and drop or um, uh, keyboard shortcuts like copy paste and um, yeah I brought some I made a video so you can see how it looks like so what happens there is I select um, different files I do this with the shift key a command key and now I only use keyboard to select multiple files in a row 
and yeah, control A, select all, um, like the basics, but they make a difference. And now I did uh, yeah with a, with a mouth and control to select a special range, drag and drop uh, on the on the breadcrumb. And now again, um, I select only with the keyboard files and uh, drag and drop them to the desired folder. Um, and yeah, right click context menu. What we also did is we um, simplified uh, how sharing works with um, with users. So in the old days, you could check every little um, right that should be granted, like view, download, upload, edit. We reduced it to roles where these um, rights are collected. And you can basically now select can view or can edit, as you see here. So this um, yeah, should really re reduce cognitive load and prevent human errors. So people are, can, make, can make less errors in that regard. Um, same goes for the sharing links. They are the same concept applies. Um, you can here also set a password policy. So if your company says, oh, we need 10 characters and capital, small letters and all that stuff, you can adjust it. So um, infinite scale comes with a same default that um, uh, complies with the BSI. And you can also, on the bottom right, um, you can also configure a band password list because um, passwords like password one exclamation mark uh, is secure. It complies with the um, with the uh, with, with the policy, but uh, it is not secure because it's used many times. So you can configure that as well. And yeah, the one thing I'm really proud of is the fast and reactive web UI. So in the um, old Oak Cloud 10, you needed to wait for about, I think, 10 seconds or something um, until a new event from other users appeared on your, on your screen um, or you needed to hit refresh, what no regular user does actually. Uh, and now it really comes in live. So it's really instant there. If your colleague changes something, um, it's, in, it's, it's instantly there. Um, and it looks like that. So on the left we have Albert, on the right we have Marie. And Albert uploads the file, so watch the right side. So it's instantly there for Marie. Now also check on the right side. Albert renames the file and it is instantly also on Marie's side renamed. So now Marie creates a new markdown file with a really cool markdown editor here. And now watch the file size on the left side. Um, when Marie saves the file, the file size on Albert's size on, on Albert's side um, refreshes automatically. So really cool. So like the UI talks to you actually. Um, yeah, search. You don't want to remember where your files are. You just want to get there somehow. I can't remember the whole file structure, so I use search quite often, like many other users. Um, it's also really reactive, so with every keystroke you get a, a live preview of the search. Um, and also there's a, a full text search, so the content is searched as well, and this comes out of the box. And there are also, yeah, here you can see how the um, uh, example, so if you search for light, and then it's also um, highlighted in the, in the content. And we also have some powerful search filters here in place. So you have too many results and you remember, oh no, effect is what I'm searching for and I know that it was in the file name. So please search only in the file name, not in the content. And I know it was yesterday when I changed it and I also remember that it was some kind of document. And there you go, burn down of your search results. And you can also select where you want to search, so in your current folder or in all files. And the um, yeah, most important change on the user-facing side is um, how sharing works with an infinite scale. Um, imagine Albert and Marie, they work on the same project. And Albert shares something with Marie so that they can collaborate. And after a short time, Albert has a new job and leaves the organization and Marie can't access his file anymore. So this is really common. 
And this is where file sharing gets complicated because Marie wants to somehow needs to get to the to the file. And this is why we um, implemented spaces. Spaces uh, are special folders who basically can have multiple managers or owners. We call them managers. And managers are basically the gatekeepers to this special folder. So um, they can um, assign another manager so that you can distribute a responsibility over many shoulders. And you can uh, yeah, you see it here on the right. So Albert and Marie are managers here. So if Albert leaves, he can just assign Marie as a manager. And then Albert leaves the organization and everything is as is. Uh, and the good thing here is also that um, the admin does not need uh, a ticket for this. So this completely happens in self-service. Um, and for spaces, you can also assign a dedicated quota for those who need this. Um, oh yeah, and <clears throat> um, if there are too many spaces, like we'll get hundreds of spaces in your instance, uh, you maybe want to do some housekeeping at some time. Uh, for this, there is a special role, which is called the space admin, it's, um, yeah, elevated uh, permission. And with this permission, you can list all the spaces that exist in, in this instance, but you can't see the contents of these spaces because you don't want someone who can look uh, into every space. Um, yeah, and you know, the, the space admin only sees uh, what spaces are there, um, who is the manager, and yeah, um, when was it modified last time, so that you can uh, yeah, reach out for the, one of the managers and ask, hey, is it still active, this space, or can we delete it? Yeah, so the summary of um, roles and permissions and also difference of folders and spaces. Won't go into detail here. And let's go to the backend side. <clears throat> so um, the challenge we have is that um, the data created worldwide is constantly growing. I think this, everybody knows that. Um, and it's growing in an exponential way. So the problem here is that we need somehow to handle these exponential data growth. And we had the problem with the PHP on cloud, with the old on cloud, um, that we hit the limits, for example, of the database. And then we needed some second database or a Galera cluster. Then you need people who can maintain the Galera cluster. They are not in the company. You need to hire them. It costs money. And yeah, so the costs at some point really increase. And yeah, on the, um, yeah, I forgot to explain. So on the x, x axis, there is the load. Load can be anything like amount of users or um, storage or amount of files, amount of requests, anything like that. And costs is total cost of ownership. So not just the um, server costs, but all you need to um, provide the service. And the uh, idea behind infinite scale is to have this, um, to have a linear, um, to have it this, this, uh, to flatten the curve, so to speak. And how do we do this? The first um, thing we did is to uh, um, don't have a database actually, so a SQL database. Um, what we do is we usually we store all the metadata so. If a file was shared with someone else, this was stored in a database. And what we did is that we took this information, the metadata, and put it just on the storage. So if you you, you basically scale with the storage. So if, uh, if it grows, you um, just need to plug in new drives. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, this comes also with the um, advantage that there is no state outside of the storage. So this is um, cloud-ready technology. Um, also, because we did a complete rewrite in Go, um, we can have async operations and um, parallel processing. So it's really cool because, for example, if you upload like thousands of uh, images from your uh, holiday um, and they need to be processed for thumbnails, this could really slow down the whole system in the old world. And now with, with infinite scale, it's a separate process. 
um, which works in the background and you can just continue working and yeah, it sometimes comes back and says, hi, I'm ready, here are the thumbnails. Um, you are basically not blocked as a user. And I think also maybe the most important thing is that we um, are really focused on um, uh, designing everything really API driven. So here are some examples we use WebDAV, gRPC for the um, inter-service communication, LibreGraph, which extends the Microsoft Graph API, OCM, the Open Cloud Mesh, so that you can share files between, for example, C, C file has it as well, I think, and Nextcloud, um, and TUS for resumable, up, resumable uploads, and the WOPI protocol from Microsoft as well. Um, for um, collaboration, live collaboration on um, Office document files. And it's also used by um, only Office and Collabora. So some uh, large scale use case I brought uh, here. Um, currently we have 1.6 million pupils um, uh, active in the Bavarian school cloud. So every pupil in Bavaria has access to an infinite scale instance. This is a uh, project from the Bavarian government. And yeah, really, really huge. We are really proud of that. Um, um, with yeah, 6,200 schools. And what they often do is they use spaces, of course. Uh, so often, often names for spaces are like um, physics 8A or sports 8A. So they organize everything in, in, in the spaces because um, when they when the, when there is a new school year, they just need to um, uh, transfer the new teacher to that space and yeah, done. Uh, yeah, extensive use of the OnCloud iPad app and WebOffice, of course. And within this project, we also did some integrations with um, the Matrix Messenger, Moodle, and GeoGebra, which is a blackboard for schools. And what these integrations basically do is they are kind of a file picker so that you can um, store and get uh, files out and in of your own cloud without having to download them. So you can just yeah, integrate, integrate the, um, your, your storage into these uh, applications. Okay, how can you try it yourself? Very simple, these guys here in the front they, um, and, and others, they um, prepared some really nice um, Docker, uh, Docker Compose image, what you just need to do is um, clone this repo here, um, then yeah, edit this end variable. You basically, if, you, if you're fine with the defaults, you just need to enter your domain. And what you then get is infinite scale core, you get the full text search, you get Collabora, so full-fledged web office, and um, the let's script SSL certificate, yeah, and there you go. So it takes, uh, yeah, maybe some minutes to get it up and running. Um, one note: if you try this um, on your local machine, you need to edit the your hosts, um, etc. hosts file, and also accept the um, invalid certificate warnings. Yeah, that's it basically. Questions, please. <laughs> Are there any questions? But they are here, so the, here in the front there are some developers if you want to talk to backend devs and you're also in the front end involved. Okay. Okay, then thank you and have a nice rest of the conference. <laughs>